Hey, deserving listeners, Vanderpump Rules Reunion Part 1. Let's check it out. Ariana, you talked a lot this year about how you and Sandoval were not spending much quality time together. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that is what caused the divide in the relationship? No, I think he caused the divide in the relationship because he was fucking other people. Other people is very different to Raquel. Yeah, I, and I get that, 100%. You know, because until it's established that the cheating is 100% Tom's fault and it, you know has something to do with their relationship and the problems a very minor thing it was a it was a factor i suppose well even i wouldn't even go that far it it was a a background element not even a factor <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I understand Ariana. It's just like, why are we talking about our relationship? Yes, all, all relationships have their problems. That has nothing to do with the fact that he cheated, which it, it really doesn't. Again, it's a background element, but this switch of topics, I understand what, where Ariana is coming from. Our communication, our connection just slowly just kind of dissipated. Had he discussed those things with you at any point? I mean, over time, of course, we've gotten in. It's not like we we were not together for nine years and never had conversations. So, yes. We saw a couple conversations that you and Tom had. So, briefly, I'm going to try to stay brief because <laughs> I, I keep yammering. Given my hypothesis about his personality and his characterological issue being one of past aggression and passivity and hidden hostility and being a pleaser, that it's not uncommon what I will hear from couples where there's a past aggressive personality disordered individual or they're somewhere on the spectrum, that the passive aggressive person, once it blows up, the relationship blows up, they will talk about the relationship like they were being abused. They will talk about, oh, it was awful. It, it was terrible. The relationship was, you know, on a daily basis was just horrible. And then you talk to the partner and they'll be like, well, we had some problems, but not like that. <laughs> what are you talking about? I tried to even talk with you about some of these things. And you just said a couple months ago that, that you never felt as close to me. What are you talking about? And, and, uh, and both are telling the truth. They're not lying. The, the difference is, is that for the passive aggressive person, they're, they live internally. They have this vast hidden world of anger that they only know about, or maybe their their best friend, you know, maybe Tom, with Swartz would tell Swartz what was how he feels on the inside and maybe even indicate uh, that he's tried to talk to Ariana about such things. But if you, you had a video camera or if you were living in Ariana's shoes, you would not characterize the way Tom broached the topics that he actually did try to talk with Ariana about these things. He, and I've heard this before from, from passive aggressive people after the fact, they will say like, no, I, I told her that the relationship needs to end and that our our relationship is is really bad and things got to change or else this is going to end. You know, very definitive statements. And they will literally believe they said those things. And that's what personality disorders are. They are distortions. They are denials. They are mental, they're unconscious mental processes that cause the individual to encode memories that are vastly different from reality. That, that's true of all the personality disorders. Uh, maybe not antisocial, it kind of depends, but, but the rest of them anyway. So for these individuals, because they're walking around and they have a pattern of wanting to express their deep, vast sea of anger, but being terrified of doing so, that they displace their parents, whoever was abusing them, onto their partner, and they will just barely say anything because again they're they're passive they 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 are hidden and so they might say something like um well you know things haven't been so great lately and then there's a little bit of a back and forth there and then they're like well you know i'm sure things will work out and then the toms of the world walk away and they believe they were very upfront with their partner about how horrible the relationship was and how it needs to end and they believe it. You'll come up to a lie detector test, which doesn't exist. But if there was, they would pass. They'd say, yeah, I said very definitive things. And they didn't. They, they never did. So there, there's evidence from Mariana and Tom that that dynamic might have been at play. Now, there's another possibility 
that he is psychopathic, and he's just saying this because it serves him. And there are other possibilities. Any point or was The night that... before that when he was screaming at me for 45 minutes straight off camera, yes. Ariana, Tom has said that you hadn't been intimate in years and that you were kind of glorified roommates. That's not true. We have been intimate. Also, having intimacy issues does not excuse literally any fucking thing. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's hard to know what was happening. But again, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a non-topic. <laughs> it doesn't matter. There are lots of couples that have these kinds of issues. It has no bearing on someone making conscious choices to lie repeatedly and take actions to harm another individual by cheating. So yeah, yeah, it's like, it doesn't have any, and yeah, I, the host is really drilling down on this. I, I wish the host would say, you know, Ariana, it's true that this has nothing to do with the cheating, but just for background, you know, and then ask the question. It's a little bothersome, and I get Ariana is, is now maybe even kind of angry at the host, right? You work on it or you break up. So going through the fucking ins and outs of our relationship is fucking pointless. It's pointless. It's, it's pointless. Stupid. It is pointless. It's victim no blaming is Schmitt, what it is. Especially with his you guys, friends. It's you guys, we're it's all under fucking There's friends zero justification too. for this. But, but then we're here why are we going? Okay, good on Swartz. I keep looking for evidence of what's going on for him. And Swartz is saying what I might say if I was somehow involved with these people that... Uh, I might I, I, I say it differently than this. I might say like, hey, hey, hey y'all, you're totally right. And I just want to be upfront and say that uh, it's interesting probably to the audience that they explore what was going on behind the scenes. But yeah, I agree with you, Ariana and James, that this background has nothing to do with what Tom Sandoval did. But, you know, we're going to be here for 10 hours. We have to have, we have to talk about something. So let's talk about this, but let's be clear. <laughs> that everything that we're talking about right now, the background, the struggles that the two of you are having had, had nothing to do with Tom uh, doing what he did. It's not a justification for it. You know, I, th I think Tom Schwartz is, is, is trying to do that, which makes me wonder, we haven't, I haven't seen much of Tom Schwartz and his behavior. Um, Y'all have, but I am seeing evidence that he's a different sort of pleaser, actually, and is maybe conflict avoidant on some level. When groups of people get together like this, there's a, a tendency for a system, and especially since they know each other so well, that there's a tendency for roles to emerge and the role that we be that we will be elected to play and the one we will volunteer to play, because those will often uh, coincide, especially over time. Uh, it, the role will often reflect the role we had in our childhood. If you were the the go-between or the peacemaker in a family, then you'll tend to be the peacemaker in systems later in life. So Tom Swartz seems to have some of those qualities. The way that he was talking about what he was doing behind the scenes with Tom Sandoval, having knowing uh, about the the infidelity uh, would be in line with that. It doesn't justify it, of course. He, he should have seen through all that and said, I, I, Tom, I, you know, to his friend Sandoval, you can't tell me about this stuff anymore because I, I'm, I'm now a part of the problem. <laughs> you should have never told me. Or uh, San, uh, uh, Swartz could have said, look, Sandoval, until, unless you tell Ariana tomorrow, I'm telling her. You know, I, I've, I've had uh, uh, you know, clinically this conversation with people where uh, someone is triangulated in like the way Swartz was. And, you know, the, the person went to my client and said, look, don't tell your husband about this thing but this major thing has happened. You know, it was a complicated situation, but where we collaboratively landed on, me and the client, was that uh, she was being triangulated and that uh, uh, it's not her fault that she is being pulled into a secret. And even though in the moment she agreed that, okay, uh, I won't tell my husband about it uh, because you're going to tell you're going to tell my husband, right? You're going to tell my husband. Okay, so then I guess I I don't want to mess things up because it's not really my place because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't her place. But when you are told something like that, it now creates a conflict with you and the other person if you withhold that. So you absolutely have the right in the Swartz position to turn to the Toms of the world and say, look, this isn't my business, but when you told me about it, 
it now is my business. It, I'm, it's a different business. It's now between me and Ariana and everyone else. You, you could have just not told me about it. You could have just not done it. Uh, I understand why you told me, but uh, there are consequences to my life now. So I've, I have, to, and plus I care about people. I care about you, arguably more than other people, but they're not the ones cheating. You're the one making those choices. So you either tell them or not. Now, I think what people will say is Swartz has cheated and Tom Sandoval has lied for him. So he would feel beholden to that. But, you know, at some point, the chain has to be broken. I mean, it's what it is. Especially with his friends. It's disgusting. You guys, we're all in a fucking friends. There's zero justification for this. But But then why are we going through this? Because we're doing a reunion. It's like therapy. It's not like therapy. I'm trying to get into the state of your relationship. That's. Yeah, it's it's not like therapy. (laughs) And I get it. I, I, in fact, I commend Ariana for pushing back constantly in the way that she is. The, especially when they ask her a question, you know, it's not necessarily that she's interjecting, but if she's going to be asked these questions, then she has every right and it's it's just that she is pointing out, look, this has nothing to do with him effing other people, <laughs> him effing f other people, you know, and he's He's overstating the problems. So let's get off this stupid topic. And I think the host is now detecting that Ariana is angry at him because I think that's justified as well. Now, uh, that thing that Swartz said, it's like therapy. I think that's what he hopes it is. I think he wants everyone to get along. At least that's the way it seems. And he might be having tremendous anxiety from this and also from his childhood of like, please don't fight. That's Fine. that's that's but what the state I'm of trying our to get into. Relationship is this. So okay, did the rest of the group sense there were significant issues in this relationship? Schwartz did. Sheena, did you? Not until more recently when Lala had. I mean, I don't know why the host doesn't ask a a different, a slightly different, but very different conceptual question of Did y'all think that? Tom was cheating on Ariana. When did you th- when did you suspect that was happening? <laughs> or how, to what extent do you think Tom's cheating had, you know, like that you could, that would be another similar question of recall about the course of things. Why are they focusing on uh, you know, so how long have you known about the problems in their relationship? Why are you talking about the problems in their relationship? <laughs> Maybe later after you establish the foundation that it's not a causal thing, it's not a justification for Tom's cheating. Will you marry me? Yes. You've been a big bro, dude. And that's, like, that's what you called me, yes. Uh, bro, that is what you call me. No, bro, I did not. Uh, well, it just goes to show how much of a friend you've never were. You've always been an opportunist. An opportunist? You fucked an Chris and they get on the show. Five days after you fucking 21. broke up. Wow, a lot of history is coming at me, right? <laughs> that y'all probably know about. Uh, in a, span of like 12 seconds, I just learned a lot about the history of, of this. I mean, I'm laughing because it's just a lot. So Raquel and James, which I think people were telling me, and then we also have their relationship. And now he's talking about James having been with Kristen to get on the show. And yeah, wow. I, I mean, it's a reality TV show, I guess. Go. My car. Five days after Seriously, we broke up, we were talking every day. We were supposed, James, to, we were supposed to move in together. James. I've stood up for you. Fuck when, you! I don't want you to stick up for me. You're a pussy when ass nobody bitch. Nobody else would. I went against you know everybody what? for you. Your band God. sucks dick. You're a nothing. Sorry, you're a nobody. Right. You're a loser. Right. And your James. fucking bar is going James, down the drain. If you you backs- uh, fundamentally, I get the anger, and if I'm understanding the background right, the way that James was saying this, he's like, we were very close friends throughout the engagement to Raquel for James, that he felt like Tom was close. So that would hurt extra, right, for James. And potentially, like, so with my for, with my former fiance, with my former partner, you're going to get together with her. So that could hurt and be humiliating. And then to hear during this reunion, the way Tom was saying, we were never close. What are you talking about? And that uh, difference in perception could be very hurtful. So, you know, I get the hurt and I get the anger. Having ho 
Get in my face again, I'll fuck you up. Yeah, yeah I'll right. fuck you up right now, bitch. Yeah, right. I'll fuck you up so quickly. Honestly, right. look at me, bro. Yeah, no, I'm no. I mean, I, I'm just gonna take a guess and say that neither one of these individuals are, you know, legitimately actually interested in a fist fight, and they know that people will stand in between them. It just kind of looks that way. Uh, so, you know, I, I, there's nothing uh, in my book, in my gauge of possible behaviors, uh, you know, being verbal, saying angry things, but, you know, are you, so you're going to fight? <laughs> is, that, is that really uh, worth it? Is it really wise? Is that really what you're going to do? Yeah. So if the this worker and the host were to stand out of the way, would James actually take a swing at Tom? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, you could tell me. Maybe, maybe James would. Stay in the fucking chair. He's the one that said it first, Andy. Stay in the chair. That's he said all you have to do. Is, okay. Go to okay. Okay. Go pee. But Pussy stay bitch. in the chair, dude. Uh, it's just, it's, um, it's my, I, you know, it's reality TV, and I. So I guess that's James's role in the crew, is to be like that. Pussy Honestly. bitch. You're a worm with a mustache. Okay. Go at it. <laughs> Call oh, yourself an artist who had the same haircut you for nine years. Work. Yeah, and it <laughs> works for me, bro. James pees on a fire hydrant like a dog, and that's his fire hydrant. It's some interesting insults game that they have going on. So you're a worm with a mustache. I mean, I guess that kind of works. And then you pee on a fire hydrant? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's... So is there a context to that? Is that a zinger? Does that really hit low? Is that there's some historical thing that we know about on the show? If not, um, you know, I guess I've heard better zingers. You done fucked up. Okay. Stop pulling out the history the books. Were All right. Keep up. Sandoval, once you started your relationship with Raquel, why not come clean to Ariana right then? <sighs> Use your words, not your fist. First and foremost. Oh, him. He's gonna beat my ass. I'm gonna beat his ass. I want him to answer this question. James? Just do me. Yeah, absolutely. You're not hurting Tom by helping him avoid this question. Just, they're going after him, but in a way that's more mature, I guess. And James doesn't comprehend that. Or James has deeper pain than what he lets on, which uh, maybe that's it. Does he? Do y'all know from what we've seen? And does that explain his behavior on the speakerphone in the last episode? Often people who do these kinds of things, that, that is what's happening for them. And they have a pattern of obscuring their pain because they're humiliated by it, by trying to humiliate the other. Do me a favor. Yeah, I'll be quiet to Tweedledee and Tweedledee. Hey, dick. just... Tweedledee. You can say whatever you want. Just stay in your seat. Right. Okay. Ugly fuck. Did you just call me an ugly fuck? <laughs> no, you're handsome. Oh, he is you. the... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought he called the host. <laughs> wow. How have I never seen this show before? I mean, this show is incredible. You will be in your dressing room. You won't be on stage. Okay. I'm going right. to get sent for a timeout. <laughs> <laughs> Why not come clean yes, with Ariana? Exactly. That is you know, a million I mean, dollar question. One of them. I was obviously scared to. I think also she was going through a lot during that time. Yeah, so he's repeating the same things he said before, which makes sense. I'm going to take a guess and say that his characterological factors haven't magically vanished in between episode 10 and the reunion. So, so there's that. Um, yeah. <laughs> The only justification for what he's saying here is if behind the scenes Ariana was abusive to him, then it would justify it. He was afraid of her abusing him. It's the only justification that I can think of. Well, what he has said is that he was afraid that she was going to kill herself. And I, at the time when he said that in the past, I was saying, well, we don't know because he's, he's the one reporting that. We don't hear that from Ariana. And we understand that he will lie and he also tries to justify things. Um, but uh, in my commentary, I imagined, well, let's imagine if that is true, blah, 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 blah. And it still doesn't mean that you don't break up with someone and cheat on them. You know, it means that you, as I think Sheena was saying to him, okay, that means that you 
tell everyone around her to support her so that she can get through the difficult time. It doesn't mean that you go on, you cheat on her, right? Because presumably if you care about someone not killing themselves, you wouldn't add more pain to the mix, right? Of cheating and lying. Anyway, so, uh, and, and clearly she's able to handle things because this is way worse than just breaking up with someone. And, you know, at least we're not hearing uh, reports of uh, suicidal intent or anything like that. But then a lot of people were commenting below saying, actually, uh, Tom is lying. He's, you know, vastly exaggerating the issue that Ariana would say things like, if you leave me, then I, I don't see the point of this life anymore or something. I can't remember the phrase that people were quoting that Ariana said, and it d didn't have anything to do with suicide. According to these people in the comments section, it had everything to do with Ariana just being really sad that their life as a couple or their life on the show would be different and that would be over, that, that sort of thing. And I didn't want to add anything. When do you think you would have told her? But I will say that it's still possible that behind the scenes there were moments, maybe not to the extent that he is saying, of that kind of talk from Ariana or alluded to. So we just can't really know. She did say she suffered from depression. Not everyone with depression will think about suicide uh, or uh, they might just barely think about it here and there. So we don't know. And again, that doesn't justify cheating, right? But he's highlighting that and uh, and it plays into my top hypothesis. It just keeps the data, the, the, the check marks in that column just keep occurring where for him, he said he was afraid to tell her and people with passive aggressive personality with, shall we say, over pleasing while secretly being angry personality, that's how they will feel. They will feel terrified of expressing disappointment. They will feel terrified of confronting someone. They will feel terrified for voicing anything that anyone else will be upset by. And what they are displacing is their childhood where someone would abuse them uh, emotionally or physically or something when they did express themselves, they did express disappointment or being upset with someone else. And so they displace that onto their partner, believing that their partner is a tyrant when really it was their parent. And so they're terrified of speaking up and they think their terror and their fear is justified when it's not. If she hadn't discovered it. I actually, had a therapy session with my therapist and we had basically planned on that following Tuesday because we would have fully wrapped filming and fully wrapped interviews so she wouldn't have to go into interviews and be like, oh, like we're here for the sandwich shop and talk about that. Well, that's quite a detail. <laughs> so Tom was in therapy and according to Tom, there was a conversation with the therapist where the therapist and Tom agreed that Tom would wait to tell Ariana until after wrapping the show, until, you know, until after the show had been fully filmed so that to save Ariana from having to deal with answering questions about it. What? <laughs> I mean, one, the, re the reunion would happen. Two, there would still be interviews. Three, wow, the, the <laughs> justifications uh, for continuing to lie and avoid just keep coming. Uh, uh, so there's that. Uh, okay, so there's two top possibilities that I'll highlight with the therapist. One is that the therapist absolutely is being fairly represented here. And the other possibility is that the therapist is not. Many, many times people will come to me, you know, as a marriage and family therapist, I, you know, I'm, over the past 10, 15 years, I mainly treat individuals and couples, but there was a good portion in the beginning of my career where I, you know, about a third, a half of my clients were families, mainly of teenagers that were struggling in various ways. And I would sometimes, it wouldn't happen all the time, but, you know, the parent might come to me and say like, um, you know, Johnny, the teenager, told us that you told him, da 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 da. And I'd be like, uh, no, <laughs> I didn't say, let me tell you what I did say. And, and it would happen a lot. So whenever I hear people talking about what their therapist said to them or what their partner's therapist said to them or their kids' therapist, the, uh, I take it with a grain of salt because people will hear things that they want to hear or will, um, 
you know, misinterpret things or whatever. So there's that's another possibility is that, you know, there's a world in which the therapist was really doing their best to get Tom to rise to the occasion and tell Ariana months prior to him being discovered. And that Tom either is selectively forgetting that or actually trying to leave that out or interpreted it differently. You know, there's a chance that the therapist tried and Tom, given his issues, just was not having it or would melt down or something. And the therapist is like, oh, I can't, I can't push him that hard, so I've got to do this other thing. And then at some point, the therapist finally, you know, helps him to rise to the occasion and have integrity for his own sake. You know, he, he the fact that he was letting this go on for so long, Tom, uh, was self-destructive. It would have been better for him if he had told Ariana earlier on or if he had broken up with Ariana or early on. So the therapist could have been thinking that. Finally helps Tom to get the courage, maybe even working on the passive aggressive part of it, if that even exists. And uh, Tom says, okay, I commit, I'm, I'm gonna tell her, but I can't do it right now. I have to wait until after the show is being filmed. And the therapist is like, oh, well, okay. I mean, at least it's at some point. Okay, so in that world, the therapist is at least doing what I would be doing. Um, I would never tell a client, you have to do this or something. Well, it depends. Like if uh, there are safety concerns, like if a client was beating their children, um, there would be a hard line that I would draw. So, uh, but it, you know, this isn't that. Um, so, but you can imagine a therapist drawing that line uh, given the harm that's happening. So anyway, uh, but the way I described it is is my style and the, the client, Tom, could still voice it like, me and my therapist decided that we would save Ariana from that pain and tell her afterwards. Uh, so that's a possibility. Um, but getting back to the first possibility, yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of therapists that, you know, there's a bell curve of competence out there. And there's a bell curve of competence on a on a variety of levels within each therapist. You know, some therapists are more competent in one thing and, you know, you could have a therapist that be really competent in one area and incompetent in another and they don't know they're incompetent in, in the other. So uh, I, I, I know that, uh, I'm, I have my own bill curves. Uh, the task that we have is, as clinicians is to be aware of it and to account for it and to disclose it and to uh, improve in those areas or to get consultation around those or to be careful when advising clients or taking action, intervening with clients, because you're like, well, this isn't really my area, so I shouldn't just be a bull in a china shop and act like I know what I'm doing. So I need to be tentative, or I need to tell the client, I'm not. This isn't really my area. So you know, we all know that, and I've trained a lot of therapists of varying levels of talent and competence. I've worked alongside therapists of varying levels of competence. I've heard a lot of stories. I've been uh, tasked. I've been a consultant on cases where therapists have been sued and where they've been complaint, you know, where a complaint has been um, issued to the state licensing board about therapists acting unethically and incompetently. So I understand that. It's unfortunate. It sucks. And, you know, it's hard enough to just find a therapist that has a, an opening spot, let alone for a client to be able to detect whether or not a therapist knows what they're doing. So it, there are solutions to it. In a nutshell, if we raise taxes and you have liaisons who know how to match clients who are in, who are in need with therapists that are the right fit, and then for that liaison, that government official uh, or just government paid individual, for that person who is also very well trained, for them to be able to monitor the match between the client and the therapist, and if it's not a good match, to uh, advise and help the client find a never, you know, that would, that would solve a lot of the problem. But the way that it is right now, because of the society, because of the politicians, because of what voters push their politicians to allocate tax dollars toward, we have a situation where you have people, clients just, you know, uh, without any education, without any knowledge, without any ability, without any power, just randomly picking someone online or maybe even word of mouth and, and hoping that the therapist is, is good enough 
and the the client has no tools to evaluate if the if the therapist is right. Uh, therapists will do incredibly unethical things, and clients don't even know it's unethical because the client often feels like they're the layperson. So it's like, well, they're the doctor. So yeah. so now I will say there's a vast sea of excellent, competent, ethical, responsible therapists of integrity and talent out there. And I know that for a fact. I've had talented therapists help me in the past. Um, I have colleagues that are talented and extremely good at their job and take things very seriously and know when they don't know something. So, you know, that that's my reaction to what Tom said. Heard or fulfilled, it feels believable, all this shit. Anyways, around that time, I remember after the guy's night out, we went to the Mondrian. The next day, you confided in me that you confided in Raquel. You pretty much told her everything that you've been telling me. You guys had like a kind of an intimate moment. When Charlotte's body wasn't even fucking cold. Okay, I don't know who Charlotte is. Uh, you can tell me in the comments, I suppose. But Swartz has a different tone now. He's changed his tune. <laughs> he seems uh, uh, more awake to the scenario and is more harsh to Tom Sandoval, right? Which is, at least that's the way I'm reading it so far. What's going on? I just got off the phone with the vet. I have to go home. Oh, Charlotte is the dog they refer to. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. Okay, okay, I didn't know that yes. in the moment. So Tom has told me that yes, he felt like she was a safe place, and he confided in her. A little so weird. I confided in her. You I'm mean just, you put guys, I'm telling you everything. Do what, what you want with it. So, it's fair to point out that it wasn't just confiding; that it was sexual. And uh, yeah, that's okay to point out. But there's a lot of things pointing at for Tom because of his issues was experiencing a great deal of loneliness and sadness and pain. And a lot of it was self-imposed because of his, the way he approaches conflict in a relationship. Um, Ariana played a role in that too. I, I, I can't imagine that that wouldn't be true. Uh, but the way it looks, it looks like Tom might be a little bit more responsible for that. You know, that doesn't justify cheating. And I encourage people, if you hate Tom Sandoval, that you allow the, yourself to have in your heart and in your mind the possibility that he might have legitimately been suffering in a way that you could relate to. Uh, the reason why I challenge everyone to do that is because that's typically the way humans are. They are complicated things. We are not all bad, all good. That's the way children see the world. So I, I often will propose that, that gray area point of view. You can absolutely condemn Tom for what he's done and really gang up on him for, uh, I mean, I don't recommend the internet gang up, but, you know, uh, we can be very judgmental about the behavior that he's done and still see him as a relatable human being. Those two things can exist in the same people. The, the reason why I, uh, I mean, that's just the way I see the world. Um, that's the way I am. That's the way I see myself. Uh, that's the way I see the loved ones around me. That's the way I see my clients because that's what I found to be true. And when I propose that point of view online, uh, uh, people will have various different reactions to me. If they are intolerable of that, they will attack me, which ha you know happens uh, you know off and on here. Um, or they will uh, call, they will like it because they don't usually hear that, and they will call me wholesome. <laughs> they will call me Mr. Rogers because they will see me as this beacon of hope, or that I'm so nice, that I'm wholesome, that I'm so good, or something. And I will also push back against that because I'm not Mr. Rogers and I, uh, I'm not any wholesome than anyone else. I'm not any better than anyone else. I'm not any moral than anyone else. I just have studied human beings to the extent that I, I see things, <laughs> uh, you know. Y'all have a profession, an expertise that you have done. If you're a baker, you, you know cakes, you know pastries. You can see, you can just watch someone make a cake and go, oh, that's that's not going to work. Well, I, I can't see that, but you can because you have an expertise. I have an expertise. And so I, I'm not wholesome. I'm accurate in my book. <laughs> well, at the very least, I'm, you could say I'm not wholesome. I'm experienced. Okay. And uh, uh, so I'm not being nice. I'm in my book, I'm being accurate. I'm being conceptually sound. 
I'm, I'm saying things that hold true in my model of how things work. When, when people come to me and I operate on that assumption, it usually works out. Now, you could argue I'm just biased and I'm trying to fit everything into my model of things, which I'm sure is also at play. But, you know, uh, uh, there, there's that. So I, I challenge you, if you hate Tom, and, and some of you have commented below and saying that I have just by me talking in this way, have, have challenged you. Because in your life, one, you can see yourself this way because a lot of people are terribly ashamed of uh, flaws or things that they've done or perceived things. And if you see the world in a black and white way, you will see yourself in this black and white way. And and you have to have elaborate defenses against any kind of perceived flaw or you'll just say, ah, fuck it, I, I'm a horrible person. And that's not okay to do to yourself and to to your partners, to the people around you, to your children. Uh, it's important to your parents. It's important to, to politicians, to you know anyone. It, it's important, I believe, to see things as accurately as possible because then you have a, a way forward. You have a way to actually uh, meet your needs and to meet other people's needs and to, to help society, to, to help nations heal, to help different subgroups of cultures that are at war with each other. You know, this is the way people talk online is, oh, the bigots or, or the Republicans or the Democrats. And the way that people paint the other is, in my book, not accurate. And, uh, uh, you know, some of it, you can absolutely judge the other side of the political aisle for some things that are factual, but to extend that into evilness and to all badness is, I believe, inaccurate. And thus, when you don't see the world accurately, you, you, we can't function as human beings, as, as systems, as relationships, as marriages, as families, and as a society, as a nation. All right, well, let's adjourn there. I've been yammering so much, and I apologize. I know a lot of you will comment below and say, like, we like the yammering, but I don't know, there's a limit isn't there? <laughs> so uh, I'll be better moving forward. And everyone, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.